Now, in this video, I really just want to talk candidly about the current state and future of Star Wars, from my point of view. And as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter and to discuss it with you all in the comments below, because I'm always open to seeing or hearing other perspectives. Anyway, a few days back now, Disney announced the release dates of three new Star Wars movies starting in December of 2022, which led me and many others to come to the logical conclusion that, after the controversy around The Last Jedi, that Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy had been cancelled, and that these new movies would be the trilogy from the Game of Thrones showrunners David Weiss and David Benioff. And though there's been no sort of official confirmation from Disney or Lucasfilm about the fate of Ryan Johnson's trilogy, or any real details about these three new movies at all, so far Ryan Johnson himself has been quiet, and he's come to the defense of his trilogy before when rumors started to swirl around about it being cancelled. Also, John Campia, who has been a strong supporter of The Last Jedi, has put out a video saying he has insider information that Johnson's trilogy is indeed no more. And again, considering his stance on Johnson and The Last Jedi, he seems like about the last person to go out on a limb and say something like that, unless he felt pretty sure of his sources. And speaking of going out on a limb, that's exactly what it looks like Lucasfilm did when they announced that Ryan Johnson was going to be given an entire trilogy of movies months before the Last Jedi even came out. Because initially, and I mentioned this in my video the other day, such a bold announcement made before his first movie was even seen by the fans would appear to mean that Lucasfilm had a tremendous amount of confidence not only in the eventual success of The Last Jedi, but how well it would be received by the fans. Making such a bold announcement months before his movie came out made it sound like Lucasfilm believed Ryan Johnson had created an absolute masterpiece that they were positive the vast majority of Star Wars fans were going to love. And look, even those fans who do think The Last Jedi is a masterpiece can or should be able to understand why other fans simply don't like it. I mean, I don't know if there's anything more divisive or a bigger risk that could have been taken than to so radically change Luke Skywalker's character from what many, many fans were hoping and expecting out of him. And again, even if you like what they did with Luke, which is certainly your prerogative, if you were shown the movie ahead of time, you likely would have had the foresight to realize not every fan was going to like this. Which is why I cannot believe that no one at Lucasfilm saw the potential huge backlash coming well in advance. I can't believe the higher-ups were so confident in what Ryan Johnson had done with the story, and with Luke, that they not only signed him on to create more movies, but that they actually announced it before The Last Jedi came out. Because it would have been one thing if they realized what fan reaction to the movie might be, and so they put a tentative agreement in place behind the scenes that they kept very quiet. And they told Johnson that if the fans react well to his story, and the movie does well of course, and keeps the excitement around Star Wars going, well, they'll sign him on for more movies. But it was another thing entirely when they announced it before the movie actually came out, because then it was like the ultimate endorsement of everything he had done in Episode 8, everything we fans were about to see. It was like them going all in on Ryan Johnson and letting everything ride on his story. Because again, the announcement got us fans even more excited for the movie than many already were, and many of us were pumped in the wake of the mystery box that was The Force Awakens. We were ready for some amazing revelations. In other words, Episode 7 offered up some very interesting possibilities that kept fans theorizing for two years, and then months before Episode 8 came out, Lucasfilm was basically saying to us fans that what Ryan Johnson had done with Episode 8 was about to deliver in a huge way, so much so that we're giving him another trilogy before you've all even seen it. They were saying they were that damn confident in him and his movie. And then when a lot of fans didn't like The Last Jedi, what were they left to say at Lucasfilm? That they had misjudged? That they didn't understand that some fans wouldn't like it? That it surprised them that it was so controversial to do that to Luke, something they really should have known? Were they really going to say they didn't know how fans might react? Which would all but acknowledge they have no idea what their fans, what their customers, really want out of Star Wars. And though I think there are a couple different reasons why Lucasfilm stayed so quiet in the face of The Last Jedi Backlash, I fully believe that one of them is because they would have had to basically admit that they don't understand the product that they're making or the ones they're making it for, and that they put all their confidence in a guy who made a movie that was vastly different from what we expected, and that would tear the fan base apart. And I know some of you out there will be quick to jump to the defense of The Last Jedi and Ryan Johnson and point out that Star Wars will get stale or boring if they're never allowed to take chances. And I do absolutely agree with you. Stagnation will eventually lead to the demise of pretty much anything, Star Wars included. 
and I'm all for taking chances and creating unique new stories and characters. However, doing it in the second to last movie in the Star Wars saga, which is very much the culmination of what should be the lasting legacy of the creator George Lucas, well, it was a terrible time to try it. The sequel trilogy should have instead gone out of its way to honor George Lucas and the fans he had made over the years, even though yes, some fans would have griped that they were playing it safe and not doing anything new, like some did about The Force Awakens. But I don't think doing that would have turned all that many fans against the franchise, not the way The Last Jedi did anyway. Lucasfilm should have approached the sequel trilogy much like Marvel approached the movie Endgame, especially in hindsight and after seeing how much money it's made. Because what Endgame does is go out of its way to, shamelessly you could even say, honor the fans it's made over the past 10 years. It's very much them saying thank you before now likely moving the franchise into a new direction to avoid the aforementioned stagnation. And the sequel trilogy should have honored the fans of Star Wars that it had made over the last 40 plus years. It should have said thank you to them before moving the franchise in a new direction. And if they then went off the rails a little bit and wanted to do something new and different, well, more power to them. They would have proven to us with the sequel trilogy that they know what Star Wars is and has always been. And now by all means, show us what it can become. And if they'd done it that way and screwed it up, well, forgiveness would have been easier to give. Because they would have only ruined some offshoot part of the galaxy or time period and or characters that fans could have likely forgot about easily enough. They wouldn't have, in the eyes of some fans, ruined one of the most iconic characters in their entire franchise, destroyed the ending of the main saga, which is the reason why many love Star Wars in the first place, and also lost the trust of so many fans all in one swift stroke. And you need only look at the name of Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker, to see that Lucasfilm and Disney do realize that they screwed up a little bit with The Last Jedi. And that title will likely be the closest thing they ever do to acknowledge that Episode 8 was a mistake on their part. Because now they're trying to tell us fans that the last movie will focus on and honor the Skywalker family. The family that the main Star Wars saga has always been about, before they then try to move on of course. And look, as I've tried to say before, and many of you out there will refuse to even try to see it from this perspective, but you should try to, this really has nothing to do with whether or not The Last Jedi was even a good movie or not, or if you like it or not. As I've said a million times before, I think that's great if you like the movie, and I'm truly happy many fans do enjoy it. But what this really boils down to, from a business perspective, is the damage done to the Star Wars brand, or the leadership at Lucasfilm not seeing the potential harm such a movie could do to their franchise. Damage that will now need to be fixed, not only in Episode 9, but elsewhere if this franchise is going to have a bright future, at least on the big screen. Because yes, whether some of you want to believe it or not, a lot of Star Wars fans did not like The Last Jedi. And though it's impossible to know just how many that actually is, those who claim it's only a tiny little minority who didn't like the movie and they're making all the fuss, are fooling themselves. Just like those on the other side of the fence who say nobody likes The Last Jedi are also fooling themselves because yes, many many fans do enjoy the movie. And this all kind of goes along with a point I'll try to make in just a moment, that not only have you simply lost a lot of fans with just one movie that could have easily been a home run if you'd given the fans more or less what they wanted out of it just another time or two before again moving the franchise in a new direction with the next trilogy, and not only have you also lost all the money they'd spend on future movies as well as all of your merchandise that is currently rotting on many store shelves, but you've also made a giant rift between two distinct sides in your fandom that in many cases absolutely refuse to even try to see the other side's point of view. And though some disagreement and debate in a fan base is fine and is going to happen no matter what you do, having a giant divide isn't good. It's not good to have your fans warring with each other and bringing down the general mood and excitement around everything you're trying to do. I mean, compare the two-year gap between episodes 7 and 8 to the two-year gap we're currently in between 8 and 9. In that first gap, it was all about fan theories and looking forward to what happens next. Yes, some people weren't a huge fan of episode 7, but they were still looking forward to 8 for the most part. Now in this current gap before 9, it's fan wars and looking backwards at what went wrong. All that momentum, excitement, and curiosity created by The Force Awakens is just gone. And had they managed to keep that momentum going, had Episode 8 been able to build off the excitement generated not only by the previous movie, but by the previous trilogies, had it been a movie that managed to honor everything that came before it while still offering a little something new and surprising, 
had it been a movie that strived to rally fans of both the original trilogy and prequel trilogy together, maybe people would be looking forward to Episode Nine the same way they were looking forward to a movie like Endgame. And maybe it would have eventually yielded somewhat similar results at the box office. But maybe more importantly, if 8 had been something else, something most, if not almost all fans, could have gotten behind, and 9 could have capped off the trilogy and ended the Skywalker saga very well, most everyone would have been excited for whatever they came up with next, whatever new and different direction this next trilogy would have gone in. And though sure, Episode 9 could still end up being a highly successful and very profitable movie if it's good, and I certainly hope that it is, really the best case scenario for it is to hopefully mend some of the damage to the fanbase and franchise as we head into the unknown. Basically what I'm saying here is, if they would have had the right approach from the start, the sequel trilogy would have been, or could have been, by and large, an exciting and unifying experience for the fandom that allowed Lucasfilm, without George Lucas, to prove to the fans that they know how to handle Star Wars without him. Instead, it currently feels like they have no grand plan and no idea what they're really doing. The sequel trilogy feels like a failed experiment to many fans, and those fans who have enjoyed it thus far, who do love The Last Jedi, will likely be less than pleased if the last part of the trilogy moves away from Johnson's vision and back towards more of what Abrams originally had in mind. Not only that, but they'll also be angered if Ryan Johnson doesn't get the trilogy he was promised, and both these things, if they happen, mind you, will likely be seen by fans of The Last Jedi as Lucasfilm caving into the demands of the quote-unquote haters, when really it'll be simple mathematics, because those who might be upset by Johnson not getting a trilogy likely aren't going to be so angry that they'll stop following the franchise, and the number of fans who do leave will be greatly outnumbered by the potential number of fans who might come back because Johnson isn't directing the next movies. Again, simple mathematics. And so, with likely nowhere near as much momentum generated from Episode Nine and the sequel trilogy as there could have easily been, and with a three-year gap to contend with because they at Disney think Star Wars fatigue is a problem, when in reality, all that three years will likely do is help a lot of Star Wars fans drift away and forget about the franchise, David Benioff and David Weiss from Game of Thrones fame will be tasked with bringing Star Wars back to its former glory in a few years from now. And for better or worse, the only thing that really seems to qualify them for the job is that they did indeed turn Game of Thrones into a massive success, which is not something that should be easily or quickly dismissed. It is an impressive feat, but does that alone qualify them to do a Star Wars trilogy, to decide the future of the entire franchise, at least in films? And I'll completely leave alone for now the fact that many fans of Game of Thrones haven't been happy with the direction they've taken the show in as of late. And though I'm obviously on the outside looking in, so I don't know for sure what goes on behind the scenes, but from this perspective, it looks like Lucasfilm keeps going out and looking for people to do Star Wars instead of letting people come to them. I mean, you have the biggest, most well-known franchise on Earth that there are no doubt many, many talented people who would love to and give anything and be honored to work on Star Wars, and yet they've gone out and got the guys who did Game of Thrones because they're the hot thing right now. And though that sounds great and all on the surface, but did they give you any sort of plan or outline before you signed them on to do a trilogy and dictate the future of your entire franchise? Or did you literally just go to them and ask if they wanted to do it because they're doing such a great job with Game of Thrones right now? And they said yes, and you decided you'll just figure out the story later. And look, I love Star Wars. I want to be very hopeful and optimistic for the future, but I'm also realistic and they've done nothing but give off the impression over the last few years that they have no idea what they're doing, and that's continuing to this day. You had Rogue One that was apparently such a mess until Tony Gilroy came in that they basically had to rewrite the whole script and reshoot the end of the movie. You then had Solo, which saw directors Lord and Miller get fired late in filming and replaced by Ron Howard, who basically had to redo the whole movie. You had Colin Trevorrow initially get hired to write and direct episode 9, only to get fired because of creative differences, apparently, which is odd because you'd think you'd make sure you were on the same page with the guy you were hiring to finish your entire trilogy. And now it seems like that decision to announce that Ryan Johnson was getting his own trilogy before his first movie ever came out is one they just kind of want us to forget about. And so, in closing, what does this all boil down to? Well, a lack of leadership. The buck has to stop at the top. It has to stop at Kathleen Kennedy and her inability to make sound decisions. And though some of you may ask why she was given a three-year contract extension several months back, if she keeps making all these mistakes, as I claim, well, perhaps the recent announcement of new movies starting in December of 2022 makes the intent of their decision become very clear. 
Because if she does leave when that contract is up, or maybe is unofficially forced out, she can say her work with Lucasfilm is done, that she finished up George Lucas's original saga, and that the future can now belong to someone else. It'll allow for a graceful exit where everyone can, in a sense, save face, and it can look like a totally mutual parting, and one that will happen a little over a year before the new trilogy kicks off, which feels like perfect timing if you want to separate her from the new trilogy, but not make it look too obvious. And I know I sound a bit like a conspiracy theorist right now, but one thing I always try and do is look at things from as many perspectives as I possibly can. And if you're Disney and all this, you want Kathleen Kennedy to finish out the sequel trilogy before you part ways with her. You don't want to fire her before Episode 9 comes out because then whoever you bring in to replace her will probably get associated with Episode 9 and the failure of the sequel trilogy. And then if 9 turns out to be a disaster, I don't think it will, you really wouldn't want them having anything to do with any of that. You also don't want to flat out fire Kennedy before this sequel trilogy is done, because it wouldn't be seen as a good PR move to fire the woman who seems to be trying to bring more women into Star Wars. The woman who has been a figurehead in the push for more strong female characters in film in general. It would have looked bad not to let her finish out this trilogy with Rey, the first female lead in Star Wars who has been brought to us by Kathleen Kennedy. And then with her gone a little over a year before the new trilogy starts, well, that's a fuzzy little gray area. Because, yes, work on it will be underway before she's actually gone, but it'll still be in progress when she leaves. So, if it doesn't go well with that new movie, you can let fans draw the conclusion that it's Kennedy's fault. That her being there at its conception is the reason why it failed. But if the new movie succeeds, you can let fans draw the conclusion it's because Kennedy wasn't around for all of it, and that whoever replaced her was the true designer or architect of it. To me, it looks like brilliant timing to let her go just a little over a year before that movie hits theaters. Well, I've rambled on long enough, so that's all I've got for this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think about any or all of this. What do you think about the future of Star Wars? Who should lead it? Is Benioff and Weiss a good fit? And do you think Kathleen Kennedy will be gone when her contract is up? And is my conspiracy theory maybe on the right track? Let me know what you think in the comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.